I went out and purchased my own little Young Hang uh, compressor. This is a 4,500 pound compressor from China. You're probably seeing a lot of reviews, uh, so I'm not going to go really in depth and take it all apart. Um, there's George Sprave, I believe, he kind of does that. Uh, and so does what I'm going to do is tell you more practically uh, just how it comes to you, how to put it together, how it works. This compressor came to me uh, via uh, eBay. This was purchased on eBay for $344.98, $345. Uh, it, you know, it came packed very well. Let's talk about this as a compressor versus uh, taking your 88 cubic foot tank, which I have right here, and bringing that to a scuba shop, getting it filled, the cost, uh, versus purchasing your own tank, uh, purchasing your own compressor. So the reason I purchased this compressor was be two reasons. One is the convenience, so not happening to have to run to the scuba shop uh, with, I have two tanks, uh, running to the scuba shop, with filling up the tanks, waiting for them to fill it. Um, are they ready? You go there, they're not ready. Uh, it, it's just, that, that's one part of it. The other part is the $15 per cost fill, uh, which didn't seem like that much at first. But if you start shooting PCPs the way I do, or the way, again, most people who get into it do, maybe once a week, twice a week, um, you're going to go through air pretty quick, especially with uh, these higher uh, pressure guns like the Adamans or the Crickets. Or, well, the Crickets not too bad. It's about 3,600. Uh, but you're going to need a lot of air. So using these guys, just it, it's just not a way to go. This is... Just a backup, just in case. Uh, this is the Benjamin pump. This is the Hill pump. This is the Mark IV. This is the latest one. Uh, it is better than the Benjamin. Not that much, but it is better. Um, is it worth the cost difference? Uh, I guess. I, I can't really... That's hard to say because this has served its purpose. It does what it had. They both do the same thing. Uh, just that the hill pump might do it a little more efficient, uh, a little better. Does it really has this little desiccant uh, water trap here that I'll be honest with you doesn't really function that well. It captures some some of the water, not that much. Water still gets in, uh, but less water than the Benjamin pump. So if you're looking to keep water out of your guns, which we all are, because again, even if they're aluminum. Uh, the certain parts of the guns that are, you know, the metal parts will start to get corrosion and, and, and gunk and, you know, they, they'll become less efficient and maybe even compromised. So this is a great, these pumps are great for a backup. And um, if you have nothing to do, you're up in the woods and you run out of air in your tank and you can't run your compressor, then this is a great way to go. Filling one of these SCBA Fireman tanks which I have reviewed in another video, how to purchase one and what to look out for. Uh, this is a second one I purchased. This was gotten again on eBay for $250, uh, $15, $20 for all the accessories. I have a homemade base made of wood. It keeps it from rolling around. Uh, it's really great. I have the base on the bottom that keeps it stable. So whether I want to stand it up or lay it down, it works just fine. This is, I'm very excited about this because I had made my own little uh, CGA 347. That's what they call the connector to these fireman tanks right here, uh, CGA 347. So that is this piece right here. This I purchased on eBay and I'll show you that as you can see right now. Okay, so here is the SCBA paintball air rifle fill station uh, adapter 36 inch micro bore hose purchased for now it's $48 um, the price does fluctuate when I purchased it it was $42 and now it, I've seen it at 44 now it's at 48 it all depends I guess on demand and supply but it's still a great price at $48 free shipping it has a built-in bleed valve a pressure manometer or reader Perfect. It works really well. It matches both my Galatian very closely and my Cricut very closely. So I no longer have to look at the end of the gun while I'm filling up. I can just look right here. This is screwed into the tank and I can just pretty much 
you know, look at the top here and see what my pressure is, you know, uh, control the valve here. When I get to my 3000 PSI fill or 3600, whatever it is, I can see it right here. I don't have to look at the tip of the gun. Very safe. So this comes with a microbore hose with your standard Forster fitting on the end. Excellent. I ha it doesn't leak. It works well. The Forster fitting is pretty smooth. Um, you know, I've seen similar items like this, three, CJ347 with the bleed valve running from anywhere 100 to 150 and higher. Um, you know what? You don't have to go purchase it there. You can do this on a budget. You can get this on eBay. It works just fine. So again, I just wanted to let you know about this uh, new item, which again can be purchased on eBay. It's excellent. Great for the price. You know, you can do, look at this, tank, accessories, fill probe, everything gauge. Um, this is, you're ready to go. Even if you just have, forget about the compressor. Just this alone, we're talking $325. Not bad, under $325. Delivered. So you can get, you don't have to spend $800, $1,000, and then another $150, $200. Don't, don't buy into that stuff. Um, someone's gonna tell you, oh, it's so much better. You know, you can't trust that Chinese stuff. Well, maybe, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I have no issue with this. I've had this inspected, it, again, from the scuba shop. They say it looks great, works fine. Um, it, again, this is a German hose, uh, at least it's stamped German hose. Uh, it works fine, tanks work fine. You, don't, you can do this on a budget. You don't have to spend thousands or, or over $1,000 just to get one tank and a fill probe and get your guns right going. Now, let's talk about the Young Hang compressor and its functionality, and then I'll talk to you about the water issue in a little bit and filling out how to get water out of uh, your, your tanks so they don't get into your, your SCBA tanks so they don't get into your guns. All right. The Young Hang air pump. This compressor is a 4,500 pound compressor purchased on eBay for $345. Uh, it seems very well built. I have used this probably about 25, yeah, about 25 times at uh, about a half an hour each time. I run this about 15 minutes because it does, this, this, is, this has not been run, so this is cool right now, you can touch this. Uh, the, the way this compressor works, there's a crankshaft in here with a piston in here. This is a two-stage compression area. This is your first stage, this is your second stage up, up here and then it comes out through this. So what happens? What, what's happening is you have a, a crankshaft in here with a piston that goes through this finned area right here. Uh, there is number, you're gonna be using number 46 hydraulic oil in this unit and filling it up is real simple. There is a gauge here on the front. Okay, so there is a gauge in the front that you can see right here and there's a fill level if you look uh, it might be a little hard for you to see at this angle uh, but if you look right there you fill it to the top just like in the picture just to the top of the red dot uh, and that oil has been changed recently so it's relatively uh, clear and that is where the uh, fill oil, the hydraulic oil fill prep, you know, fill level is, so that you can see, and this is, to, um, to change the oil, you will dump the oil from this nut here. You're going to screw that and, you know, have, have a little, you know, glass or something to catch. Uses about 12 ounces or so uh, of, of hydraulic oil. This is where, again, the oil level is. You will fill from the front here, and this is very easy to see here. You, it'll come like this with this little tab. This is the oil fill. What you will do is use this little aerator here. Kind of allows, I guess, the oil to not get foamy um, because it is moving at a pretty quick pace. So you'll screw that down and that takes care of that. On either end here you have a bleed valve. Just take one of your 
your screws here, one of your nuts, screw that in. Again, when you're filling, you'll keep this all the way tightened. And when it's time to, you know, shut the machine off, you'll just bleed the air from here or unless you have a bleed valve. There is another uh, air valve on this side here. I don't know what it does, but I know air escapes. It might just be a second bleed valve. So you'll kind of want to make sure you have both these nuts in place um, just to make sure that, you know, you're not losing air. This here seems to be a pressure release valve. I've seen these on other compressors. Um, I'm not sure if it blows on its own or in case you can't get the air out, you can kind of get it from there. Uh, I mean, they've done, I guess, as good a job as they can do, but it is pretty rudimentary. Uh, <laughs> there's not too much in it except telling you don't run this without oil in here because when they ship it to you, it will not have oil. And the other item, very, very important, this product is water cooled. Cool. So you will have a water pump. This is your pump sending the, this will sit, these two parts right here will sit in a bucket of water. Um, you probably want a five gallon bucket. And what it'll happen is this sucks water in through this bottom right here, passes cold water through the piston, the outer part of the piston, and sends the cold water back into the bucket through here. So you'll, this will get very, very hot. Do not touch anything in this upper area. Um, it really, even the, the crank will get a little bit warm too. It'll get hot. But this area, especially when you're running this pump, be very, very careful. Do not touch this area. You will burn yourself. You see this on the top, I'll tilt it forward. This particular model has a uh, shutoff, automatic shutoff, and a pressure. You can shut it off at different pressures. A little siren will sound with a you know beeping sound and a red uh, uh, light here. It does have a temperature gauge, which appears to be coming. It is a temperature. Oh, I see. It's, it actually slides in and out. So it's nothing more. It sits inside the piston. Uh, again, I would expect, I'm, I'm surprised that this is uh, loose like that. It fits really nice. Um, let me show you what that looks like so you can kind of see. So the temperature gauge that I was just talking about is right here. Look at this. It just kind of slides out. Look at that completely and just slides back in. So that's pretty strange, uh, uh, but that's the way it is. That's the way it works. It seems to work okay. Uh, again, this is not a $3,000 uh, compressor. This is a $300 compressor. Uh, it is one, it is 10% the cost of compressors that probably work in the same fashion. Um, but this is pretty good. So another item, the hose had to be attached it was screwed in here at the top, and I did use, it was leaking. Uh, it does need Teflon tape. I used a little Teflon tape, no problem. And it comes with a filter in here. So this little area, this is your Foster connection. That screws into this little spot here, and inside here is a filter. There it goes. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty, and this side is clean. So it actually keeps dirt from getting into uh, your tank, and that is pretty important. Now it doesn't help; it doesn't keep water from going getting into your tank, but it keeps dirt from getting into your tank. Um, I will probably change this more often. It did come with five extra uh, of these. They're cotton, I guess. They're they're they're, st they're stiff cotton, and three extra O-rings. Which these O-rings go around. I've seen the piston, again, from George Sprave. If you look at his video, um, you'll see he takes this whole thing apart. I, I'm not that brave. I'm not going to take it apart. At some point, I will. Um, if the, I don't know how long this thing will last. Uh, I have my own little formula for how long this should last. Uh, you figure I paid $350 plus $20 for the number 46 hydraulic oil, by the way, which you can get. The hydraulic oil can be purchased. Uh, at Pet Boys, you don't have to go anywhere. It's thirteen dollars. I said twenty. It's thirteen. Uh, the Young Hang does a great job of filling these large eighty-eight cubic uh, feet SCBA tanks very quickly. Even though it gets hot, it but it fills very quickly. For instance, this 
particular tank right here uh, was filled up from 2,900 PSI to about 4,100 PSI in about 28 to 30 minutes. Uh, it's pretty good. I don't like to run this longer than a half an hour. Uh, I recommend probably running it like 20 minutes at a time, let it cool down. Th that's just my thing. I know they say you can run it for a half an hour or longer, uh, but I'm just thinking t for longevity and, and to keep this uh, compressor running well, I'm gonna run it for about 20 minutes at a time, let it cool down a bit, and then you know, run it for another 20 minutes. And I think 40 minutes is enough to get a large tank like this from about 2,900 PSI to about 4,200 PSI uh, easily, and this will run pretty well. Uh, the other thing is don't forget to change your oil relatively frequently. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. Again, $13, $14 for a gallon uh, at Pep Boys. Uh, I, I just recommend that you change it uh, just a little more frequently than than you think you need to uh, because again for that little bit of money it, it's like a car you know you want to keep that car running uh, to 200 300,000 miles just keep changing the oil same thing here just change the oil a little more frequently as soon as you start to see it change color uh, you know right in front here oh, let's see you can't see me there right in front here when you see that oil starting to change color just you know change the oil doesn't take much it takes five minutes and only uses uh, again a few ounces uh, of oil so a gallon will take you for quite a bit uh, you could probably get uh, let's see uh, 128 right figure 12 maybe like 10 10 fills something like that so my formula for breaking even with this particular pump just forget about the convenience let's just talk about dollars uh, let's not talk about cents let's talk about dollars uh, figure that this was $345, $15 for the oil, $360, uh, $15 per fill at the scuba shop. Do the math. It's about 20, it's 24 fills. Uh, yeah, I think 15, yeah, 24, it's 360. So 24 fills, I break even. Well, I've already done 25. So uh, I've broken even already. And this thing does not seem that there is any issue with it so far. Uh, but it, it's, it's a heavy little sturdy machine, seems well built. Um, I, don't see, I don't see anything loose yet. Uh, I, I haven't had any issues, but it's fine. It's fine. So again, I've already broken even. I'm actually ahead because I'm up to 25. And let's remember, I can fill this at any time. It, loudness, um, this is like running a blender. It's not super quiet, but it's not super loud. It's like a blender. Uh, you keep it in the garage or in the basement. It's not a big deal, and uh, it works very well. I've been very happy. It did also come with a whole bunch of other rings and burst discs. You get three burst discs. Now, these burst discs, let me show you where they are. Here. So right here, let me turn this towards you. So right here, where the, where the first stage you know, line goes, you have a burst disc. What you would do is you just unscrew this. There's a little hole on the top. And if you were to, let's say, allow this compressor to go beyond five, 6,000, you'd hear a loud bang, not too loud, but a loud enough bang, because it is a piece of metal that's gonna rupture right here. And all it is, is a little piece of, again, I, oh, actually there's four, excuse me, there's four in here. That's pretty nice. So you get four burst discs. Um, and I know this because you deal with these with, in the Ninja bottles. But the burst disc in the Ninja model, it's not a piece of metal that you replace. So this you would unscrew, take out the broken burst disc, which is a piece of flat metal, circular metal, and put this one back in and just screw it back in. Really nice item. So you get O-rings, burst discs, extra uh, filters, O-rings for the pistons. Uh, I don't know, I mean, instructions. Uh, they're, they're not totally useless. Uh, again, the way you set your... Uh, uh, pressure setting to shut off is from the top. I'll show you what this looks like. So Let's what see. you'll do is you'll just turn this little knob and you see this indicator right here? That's really where the level is. It's about 4,500. You just turn this knob and that will push it. See how it just, just pushed that? So now let me go the other way. Here we go. I'm coming around. 
and now I am lowering it. That's about 4,000. See that? That, that, that level right there. This little piece of metal kind of goes around. You have to go around it the whole way. And then it pushes on the setter. And there is about 4,500. So that, that means it will shut off at 4,500. This little red buzzer, light and buzzer, will go off. This temperature will probably run at about 50 to 55. Um, again, you want to really run cool water through this uh, tank here, uh, through this piston part here. And I add ice every 15 minutes or so because I try to keep this temperature around 49, just below 50. It's hard to do, um, but I figure the cooler you keep this area, the longer it's going to last. Okay, so how do we get this connected to your SCBA tank? It's not that difficult. So. This is just like the one I showed you before that I purchased on eBay. This is a 340, it says it right on there, CGA 347, connected to a stainless steel T and a stainless steel bleed valve, along with a reducer, because this is a, I believe, a quarter inch, going down to an eighth of an inch. And then at the end is a foster, is a male foster connector. So it's one, two, three, four pieces, basically. Five pieces if you, you know, the reducer. So it's very simple. I just connected them with Teflon tape. This side connects to the SCBA. This side gets accepted by the female. Push it in, and there's the connection. Take this part. And I'll show you over here, as you can see. So just take it, put it in, screw that down. Now this is not the exact order of operation. Again, let me disconnect that. All right, so screw that down. The end here, just connect that. Again, make sure this is tightened down. Now it's a little loose, but that's okay because the pressure will pull it back and tighten everything up. All right, so let's talk about actually using the Young Hang air, air pump, air compressor, to fill up the SCBA here that we have. Um, I won't actually do it, I'll just tell you the steps. Um, just because it's loud, I'm on a table. I would not operate this on a table. Um, I don't think it'll walk away, but why take a chance? I operate this on the floor. I have a pad that I put underneath so, of it. We have our female foster. You see our male foster here. Again, everything is closed, your air tank is closed. It might have 3,000 pounds of pressure in it or something, like maybe 2,000, depending on what you lowered it to. Keep the machine off, make the connection, okay? Make sure all the connections are okay, all your bleed valves are shut off, and most importantly, make sure water is actually flowing from the pump out of this side so that this piston, and you'll notice the temperature will start dropping as the cold water is passing through, and you haven't turned anything on yet. The cold water will bring this temperature down. Usually it's around 23, 20, depending on what the temperature, ambient temperature is. Um, here in New York, it happens to be around 23 right now. Uh, Celsius, everything is in Celsius. So what you would do is turn on your pump. Once the water is flowing, you'd start to hear it running. It would scare you a little bit. Um, you shouldn't hear any hissing anywhere because everything should be tied down. It's making noise. And you should watch the pressure. When the pressure gets to about 2,500 or something around what's in your tank, 25, 3,000, somewhere in that range, you start to open your SCBA tank. And what will happen is you'll notice the pressure gauge will either raise or lower, and they'll equalize. Okay? And the pump will just start filling up. It's free-flowing through the system into your tank. At some point, this is your, your SCBA is open, the machine is pumping, it will stop and shut off automatically if you've got the, the version that shuts off. There are a bunch of other versions. Um, by the way, this is the 110 volt version. There is a 220 volt. It's much easier for me to use the 110. It's everywhere. Everything's pretty much 15 or 20 amps. Uh, I believe it needs 8 amps. So it's pretty standard here in the States. Uh, a 110 should work just fine, uh, and that is a good thing. So once this has shut off, at least from the automatic shut off, 
actually shut off the compressor, close your SCBA tank valve, okay? Now there's still pressure in here. Do not disconnect anything. You gotta release the pressure. You have two options. If you build using my little system here, you can do it from here, which is fine, or you can do it from here. I have two. One, two. Uh, it's just an extra step for me. I, I just, I didn't have to have a bleed valve here, but I feel better with it. And I've noticed that when I bleed the valve from here, water escapes better than if I bleed the valve from here, because there's water in this line. So once you've shut this off, and keep it, I, I like to fill my tank while it's laying down, uh, maybe even slightly tilted forward a bit. Why? Because there will get, there will be water. Okay, if you're not using either the Diablo from Air Venturi or uh, the Alpha uh, air dryer, I don't know what they call it, that Brancato uses. Uh, it's a big item, it needs to be standing up. And Anyway, I'm not using that right now. I may get that eventually, but for now I'm not. Uh, so once you've bled off the air, you'll notice that there's a little hole. Well, let's see. Well, the hole is actually, oh, there it is. The hole is right there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a hole right there. Air will bleed out with water. You can then bleed it from here. It's already bled, so it doesn't matter. Unscrew that. Disconnect. And what will happen is there's still a little bit of water in this tank. So what I like to do, and this is what I was telling you earlier, how do I remove the water? So now you're, everything, your tank is closed. You don't have to worry. You can disconnect what you use to fill your SCBA tanks. And that's the CGA 347 connection. Okay, and what I like to do, I'll hold my tank upside down, like so, okay? See that? It's upside down. What I'm trying to do is get the water to come down. Now, there's no water in here because I've bled it out. And then I'll just open it and let the water squirt out. That's it. Right now, it's as dry as can be. So, is this the best way to bleed water out of your, out of your tank? Uh, maybe not, and you'll hear, I'll probably get a shitload of, uh, wow, that's crazy, you're not getting all the water out, and yeah, that's probably true. But you know what? I'm also not spending 400 bucks. Uh, I'm not seeing an issue in my air guns with water. Um, I'm, as you can see, I've held them upside down, no water squirting out. I've taken apart my Galatian, my hats on Galatian. The tube was dry. So the way I see it, about 300 on the tank with the, with the connector, the fill hose, 350 on, on your compressor. I mean, for 650 bucks, maybe let's go all out, say 700 bucks, you've got a compressor, a tank, fill hose, and you're ready to go. If you, again, about the water issue, if you have the extra two or four hundred dollars to purchase either the Alpha or the Air Venturi uh, Diablo, uh, you know, desiccant. I, I don't know. I don't really know if it's desiccant, but it has something in there. Um, and and you can you can see it on YouTube. There's um, uh, Joe Broncato. I think goes over why the desiccant shouldn't touch the metal because of acid. Um, I've read a lot of the post inside there, and a lot of people say there is no acid. Uh, so I'm not really sure. I'm not a scientist, and I'm not sure whether they are either. Uh, but what I can tell you is, I guess it might be better uh, to add the filter. If, you can, if it's no big deal for you to spend another two or 400 bucks, go for it. Um, for me, for now, I don't have very expensive guns. Um, I like the way the system's working. I don't see an issue with water buildup. Uh, if I do, well, then maybe I will get some kind of uh, a water filter for the system and put it in between here, you know, so that uh, I'm not getting any water into my... Again, I do not fill directly into my guns. That's another thing I want to point out about this whole water issue. If you were to fill directly into your guns, yes, you're going to get water in your gun. But if you... I'm doing a two-stage. I'm filling my SCBA tank, which then I fill my guns. So I'm emptying the water out of the tanks before I fill up the gun. So I, I don't know, I might be missing a, a step, but this is working for me and this is on a budget. Hope it works for you.